Good morning, everybody. Good morning, George. Hey, good morning, Phil. How are you doing? Outstanding. Everybody, this is Saturday morning with George and Phil. 22 minutes to help you become the best version of yourself. Whether you found yourself out of shape, struggling in a dead-end job, or maybe even in job transition. We're your hosts, George Murray <laughs> and Phil Connor, to help you move from where you are today to where you want to be tomorrow. We're glad you can meet us early this Saturday morning. Uh, we do encourage your questions. Throw them in the chat, and we'll try to answer as many as time allows. Uh, it's episode 22, and we're talking about the importance of a mentor this morning. So good morning, George. Hey, good morning. How are you? So first, before we start, I want to all, always thank. Let me make sure I get all my. See, you know what? Every it's always every time we have this, where there's always a little bit of technical difficulty. I wish I had some producer, you know, so they could set all this up. But uh, we'll try to figure this out. We want to make sure that we recognize our sponsors, um, Thrivent. So the folks at Thrivent have been helping people for more than 10 years uh, with Skip Nelson. And uh, Skip has really got a heart for helping people, especially in career transition. You know, he himself has been in a career transition. He knows what it's like and uh, what you need to understand from the overall finances to make sure that you understand your roadmap to success. And he offers a free consultation, one hour. You just need to take your phone, scan it over that little scanner button, and you'll go right to his calendar and you can set up some time. I highly encourage you know what there's never a free meal or a free meeting anymore right so hey unique and different thanks to the folks at thriving the uh, no thank you everybody and uh you know george the seasons are changing yeah especially this morning very very cold right you know it's uh almost time for football uh weather and uh sitting on the stands on friday night with uh, blankets and uh, hopefully heater mittens and socks <laughs> yeah, or if you're inside, maybe gathering around the fireplace, perhaps with a cup of coffee and some friends. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's a good plug. <laughs> I, I imagine no matter what we do, it's always going to be more enjoyable when we do it with others. Um, on this show, we often talk about setting goals, making plans, but even that's more enjoyable when we can share it with others. And that's why we're all glad that you're joining us this morning. Uh, today's topic is mentoring, and I think it's a great segue into working with others. Um, George, I know you and I were talking before we went on the air, but could you share maybe a mentor that has been particularly impactful for you? Yeah, um, I would say right out of the military, one of the best mentors and still a good confidant even today um, was Bob Simpson. You know, um, I worked with Bob at TRW. He was one of my first managers um, and just very charismatic, knew everybody. Uh, knew their name, knew their spouses, um, knew a little bit about them, especially with their teams. You know, me being a Giants fan, he'd always turn around and come down on Mondays and really rib me because the Giants at that time were doing so well. A uh, great young quarterback at the Giants this year. Yeah, let's think, see if we can turn around and win a few. <laughs> for me, I, you know, like you, I've, I've had mentors in different aspects of my life. Sometimes I didn't realize their impact until much later. I think my earliest aha moment was when my my boss's boss a, a gentleman named pat driscoll uh, if i remember correctly he set me aside and explained how companies pay people in exchange for the value that those people provide the company you know i was a young kid maybe 14 15 years old but that has always stuck with me that in order for me to get my paycheck i need to provide my employer value each and every day um and, and it's, you know, I try to wake up every morning with that mindset. What's one moment that a mentor provided that aha moment to you, do you think? Um, yeah, I'd probably go all the way back to my military days, right? You know, um, I had the opportunity to uh, drive a colonel, actually Colonel McDowell, around for a couple of months. And we were doing maneuvers out the field. And uh, he was a field promoted uh, officer. He was an E6 before he got promoted during Vietnam War. And so... We were out there and he went right up to the front line and started talking to the privates and, you know, the the corporals. And interestingly enough, he got to about 10 or 12 folks before the talk. The command center came out and lieutenants and captains kind of swirled around. He said, well, first of all, there's a couple of things. He said, you guys aren't out here enough communicating, talking and understanding 
what your team's like, what they need. He said, you guys are going to lose the battle. He said, because of the fact that your front line doesn't have the education, doesn't have the tools, and they're sleep deprived. And that really stuck with me, you know, all the way through manufacturing. We need to, you know, every day is a challenge in manufacturing. And you need to make sure your front line's properly trained, they got the right tools, and you're engaged. And that really is something in my next book, you'll actually go, we'll go into a little bit more detail on that. Well, in my mind, it's, it's that we're always learning. And just because we reach a leadership position, we can't forget the fact that there's aspects of the business, aspects of our people and our teams that we don't know. And that, you know, we can't accomplish great things solo. And we all need help from time to time. And we happen to have a friend that knows the power of helping friends be successful, the power of a mentor. Um, in fact, she's recently written about it. Absolutely. You know, we want to welcome Lori forever to our show. Lori, great to have you on our show today. Love the book, by the way. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and I'm So Lori, here. why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? You bet. I uh, am a native Minnesotan and lifelong performing artist. I've been acting and when I was in you know, junior high and high school, I was in high school speech and tons of plays. Then after I got done at the University of Minnesota, I moved out to New York City. I worked in the entertainment industry out there. But then I landed as so many of us, you know, get a life transformation handed to us. I landed in international banking for 20 years. So someone told me maybe a decade ago that I'm a fusion professional because I've got a lot of hands and fingers and feet in the arts, but also am very business oriented and corporate oriented as well. The, the, I, I, great. And I think you're going to be able to bring a lot of insight to our viewers this morning. Um, Lori, you've studied this subject of mentorship quite a bit. Could you share the benefits for our viewers of, of the value of a mentor and, and what is the criteria someone should look for in a mentor? Well, George and Phil, each one of you in your opening remarks captured a couple of excellent points. Something I heard you say, George, is a benefit of having a mentor is someone who is a confidant, someone that is safe for you to speak honestly about your career challenges, about what's truly going on, so that that person whom you trust and who has experience can give you some insight, can weigh in. Maybe they've been through something quite similar and so they have life lessons to share. And Phil, you mentioned about how you could see with at least one of your mentors, it's like gardening. They planted these seeds of wisdom that were just so resonant with you that, that you, could, you could look at that decades later and say, my gosh, that was just such great advice. So that's a benefit of having a mentor. What you want to look for in a mentor, and I'm coming from a space where I ran a mentor program inside the international division of a corporation for 12 years. And I worked with hundreds of people, men, women, all different levels, across different cultures, different countries. So what we want to look for in a mentor is, well, I've already said it, someone that you trust, someone who is credible to you, that you would really invest some weight in the advice that they would give you. And also someone that has, and George, you know this because you read the book, someone that has um, clarity, a, a clarity about you, and maybe they have some characteristics that you would like to emulate, right? That you know, someone that you admire and you think, how did they navigate that awful meeting? <laughs> you know, man, they could go negotiate peace for the United Nations. They're a diplomat. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need those skills. I need those skills as a leader. I wish I was more diplomatic. I wish I was more of a deep, thoughtful listener. Maybe that's someone that you want to seek out and tap them on the shoulder and say, a version of what I just said. I saw how you operated in that meeting. I really admire your skills. That's something I would like to cultivate in myself. Would you be open to mentoring me and helping me to develop that? 
that's a good, that's a good, like the divining rod to guide you to who might be a great mentor for you. That's great. Hey, Lori, you know, I love the book, by the way. Um, for those who want the book, I highly suggest that if you're looking to be a mentor or even a mentee, definitely a lot of great information. Get it on uh, Am or get it on Kindle, and you can also get it on Audible, right? I got old school. I actually bought the book uh, right straight from Lori Crever. But hey, you talk about in the book, there's two types of mentoring. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. I bet most of us in this conversation this morning have had informal mentors, one or more, informal. Think back, someone where maybe you bought them coffee and said, may I pick your brain? <laughs> you know, my boss is driving me crazy, or I don't know how this happened. I ended up in accounting. I can't stand it. I need to do some type of career pivot. And I value you. I value your insights. Those are fantastic opportunities and relationships with an informal mentor. More of a formal mentor could be, for example, the program that I ran inside my corporation where it lasted for one year, it was structure to it. You would apply or have your manager nominate you. And a benefit, if you have access to a formal program, whether it's in your company, through your university, or maybe you're part of a business association that has a mentoring effort. A benefit there is that you maybe would have someone like me who is similar to a concierge, right? So my role running a mentor program was to have a wide range of relationships with prospective mentors. So then when you come in and say, here's what I am looking to develop in myself, a formal mentor program coordinator has a Rolodex. I might be dating myself on that, but you know, a contact, a database where then they can find, wow, who would be the dream mentor for you? So formal versus informal, formal, well, they both have benefits. Formal, you might be, you might find like you're a little bit more under the microscope, right? Because if a business association is running a program, they need you to be a success story. You know, they want to keep attracting volunteer mentors. So they want you to be successful. Of course you do as well, but informal can be wonderful. If you're trying to maybe remember George in the book, I talk about sometimes you need to quietly get away from a bad manager or team. That's not a good match for you. Then I think a less formal arrangement would be quite beneficial for you. Lawyer Forbes magazine recently had an article that they talked about how, although 97% of people that have a mentor find it valuable, only 37% of professionals have one. So what are, what are some principles for a prospective mentee to remember? A big one that I recommend is your readiness. Don't you find when we get to our adulthood, to a degree, now we know everything. <laughs> and yet for a mentoring relationship to bear fruit, you have to be open to some new ideas. And I know, George, because George, I have your gorgeous book, which I love. George, you are definitely in this camp of willing to be humble willing to be a lifelong learner, that is the mentee or protege mindset. So when you are ready, you know, there's an adage many of us have heard, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So your readiness is part of it. You have to be open to some new ideas. And honestly, if you're tuned in right now or you're watching the rebroadcast, Think about a time in your life, it might have been when you were a young person, maybe from a coach or a teacher, where, and Phil gave us a great one, someone offered just a beautiful, meaningful piece of advice. Wow. I mean, good for them, but also good for you, that you absorbed it, that you gave that advice some room to breathe and look at that, inspect it, consider it. And then is it worth adopting as your own? That's really what that whole relationship is about. And if you are a mentor looking at this, 
don't you find when you see your mentee adopting and giving space to your advice, that's pretty fun for you. Most mentors are volunteers. So that is just a sheer joy. And then to see that person develop. So be open. It's hard. It takes humility, not saying it's easy, uh, but you could really mine some gems. You know, Lori, um, great advice. I, you know, one of the things that I loved about the book was in, in chapter seven, I think it was, you talk about everyone has a unibrow. Can you talk to us about that? <laughs> yes. I hope I don't have one. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a, I had a literal situation of a, a unibrow debacle in the mentor program, but I end up using it in the book as a metaphor as well. So literally in the mentor program I ran, I had a mentor call me two months into the mentor relationship. And he said, Lori, may I talk to my mentee about his unibrow? And I said, I think you better. I just knew by the, the gravity of what the mentor was saying, that this was a thing. And forgive me, folks, if your completely rational response right now is, that is terrible, how unfair, that's external, That that's a cosmetic thing. Are you kidding me? What kind of mentor, what kind of person would judge somebody by having a big old unibrow across their face? Well, yeah, it's not just. It's not fair, but we do, we judge a book by its cover. We do get evaluated even subconsciously by our grooming and how we come across. So in its simplicity, yes, we sent this junior executive for the first time. He had no clue. He, he didn't realize that this was sitting there. It was just him, right? We sent him to a proper barber who waxed that. And the thing is, folks, the guy's brilliant, genius, MBA, wonderful personality, all kinds of leadership qualities, his career took off. I'm just saying, think about it. You don't look at yourself all day, right? You look at yourself a couple times in the mirror, but everybody around you, they're experiencing you. So the unibrow metaphor is probably each one of us has a metaphorical unibrow, something about us we do not see. We're not seeing it. But all of our colleagues are looking at it and it drives them crazy. It could be a behavior of yours. It could be that you constantly interrupt. It could be that you blather on and on and you just never seem to conclude your thoughts or you know whatever this is. It, it, you're sassy, you, you tell off color joke whatever this is. So getting back to having a mentor, a mentor is someone that you will trust and you will allow them to say, yo, Lori, I saw you in that meeting. You interrupt people. That is not a good behavior. You know, let's work on that. And are you able to really hear that and say, holy cow, I do, right? I mean, I, I didn't even know this about myself. So that's what that's what the unibrow story is. <laughs> oh, Lori, thanks I, I so much it. for thanks for sharing that example. I think that that's really an impactful visual for all of us to to take in. I, one thing I'm curious about is we know that 89 percent of people that have a mentor go on to mentor other people. And and just one last question before we have to wrap up: what What are the landmines to avoid either seeking out a mentor or working with a mentor? I think you want to be sure, even though it's tantalizing to be in pursuit of the CEO or the music producer who has been nominated for and won Grammy Awards. Maybe you can score that person as your mentor. However, if someone is really senior and busy, you might not have much access to them. So that would be one pitfall to avoid is think about someone that you were going to have steady access to that you could have 
You could get together for coffee once a month, right? And really be able to richly hear what they have to say. And importantly, like we said in the beginning, have them as your confidant so that you feel safe talking to them. Because if there's someone too senior, maybe you're going to feel a little too image conscious, right? That would be understandable. You want someone that, as the saying goes, you can let your hair down up, speak honestly about what's going on. That way they can truly help you. Great advice. Hey, Lori, I, I really appreciate you dropping in and sharing us with your book here, Protege Power. Um, any closing thoughts or inputs? I hear that there's something going on uh, later this after or later this evening. Oh, that's right. Thank you, George. Besides my corporate life, remember I mentioned I am a performing artist and I do comedy improv with Jester's Comedy Improv here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And today, Saturday, that we're doing this broadcast, we are performing in Improvocation at 10.30 p.m. tonight at the Phoenix Theater in Uptown Minneapolis. So if you're looking for entertainment at that time tonight, we would love to have you come out and see the show. It's lots of fun. And if we want a book, will you have it for us? Yes. Find me on LinkedIn, Lori Creever. I also have a website that we've been promoting. And as George mentioned in the beginning, if your preference is to consume a book as an audio book or as a Kindle e-reader, then you can find the book out on Amazon or Apple iTunes for the audio version, all those standard platforms. Thanks again for joining us on a Saturday, Lori. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, George. It's been wonderful having coffee hey. with George and Phil. Yeah. Hey, thank you. <laughs> And if, if you are in the Minneapolis area, today is October 16th. And as she said, tonight uh, you could see her live um, doing some improv, which is fantastic. Oh, great. You know, one of the things we want to do always is recognize our speakers because they just have such a great amount of information. And Lori is no different. You know, there's an opportunity, as she said, you can get the book on Audible or you can get it on Kindle, or tonight you can actually just pick up a copy and hopefully she might be able to sign that book. But it's a great book. I read it myself, got a lot of information on it. Um, you can get uh, Lori uh, at the following connections. And I thank Lori for her time. Yeah, you can chat with her at her email address you see there. I don't know, George, if we can lower that banner so they can see the website. You can see the link on, on LinkedIn. You can search for her. But um, if you want to order the book, Go to protégepower.com. Uh, thanks again, Lori, for joining us today. Absolutely. So what do we got going on next here? We got our next show coming up, don't we? Next episode is November 6th. That's the first Saturday, as, as you know, or the first and third Saturday of the month. November 6th, we're going to talk about a purpose statement. And you never know who will stop by for coffee with George and Phil. So we hope you'll tune in and watch us 8.02 in the morning, Central Time. Uh, sure, we'll have another great special guest. And George, uh, you've launched a new hired weekly newsletter. Um, and can you share a little bit briefly about what's in your newsletter? Yeah, so the newsletter is basically helping people with career transition specifically, or just if they're contemplating career transition, as we're talking about the great realization as things are coming up. Um, but once a week, I just sent out a couple of uh, really great articles that are just sign of the times, whether they've been happening just recently in that week or that topic of the month and helping people just to land faster. I mean, with 10.3 million jobs still available and 8 million, 8.1 million people still unemployed, found that it's still the process, right? What is this process of career transition? And so the newsletter, if they want all they got to do is connect with me, ask to get on the distribution center, and we'll, we'll get that out to them. Well, and I think that the, the powerful thing about the newsletter for me to, to remind everybody that's listening is that although there's millions of jobs out there, you need to find the one that's right for you, where you can contribute the most value and you're going to be able to have the most impact. And that takes a process that takes, um, you know, hard work candidly. And, and, and George has great tips to share. George, you also have this transformation community. What's that about? Yeah. So, you know, we had briefly talked about this a couple of shows ago is, is that, you know, I think it was just a timing, but just before COVID hit last year, 
I just started pulling some people together, whether they had just recently landed or they were contemplating or they were actually in full career transition struggling. And it's just a community on a WhatsApp that helps motivate people, keep them in line. Accountability is so critically important when we're in career transition because we can easily lay back. Um, so this is a group, you know, between 40 and 60 people that just, hey, you know what, here's my, here's my scheduled day. Here's how I can help you. And it's helped people lose double digit weight. It's actually helped people get closer to their family, um, whether, you know, taking longer walks or taking walks at all with their significant other. But it's, a, it's just a community to come together and help people. And that's kind of the show in, in my background is just helping people get better. Wow, that's fantastic. And it's, it's great that the opportunity to pay it forward. But also, we're going to step out of our virtual coffee shop in a couple of weeks. Join us for a special LinkedIn Live event called The Great Realization. You know, with the company turnover George just talked about, folks are struggling to land that new role. So many things for us to, to reinvent, to stay competitive. Join me as I interview George on the different facets of job transition, um, both from a job seeker standpoint, but also as an employer, whether you're trying to retain talent, reverse the turnstile a month, re reduce the turnstile of turnover, um, as well as many other topics. So until next time, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for sharing your coffee with George and Phil. And remember to achieve forward. and. Get better.